dude built the secret apartment in an unused corner of a busy shopping mall and lived there for four years before being discovered. Please note, if this post declares something as a fact proof is required. The title must be descriptive, no text is allowed on images, common, recent reposts are not allowed. See this post for more information, I am a bot, and this action was performed automatically. Please contact the moderators of this subreddit if you have any questions or concerns. I was accidentally locked in the Painra in Lancaster. Pi years ago, there was a corner nook where you're pretty much isolated from everyone. I was studying, lost track of time, and when I got up to get out noticed there weren't any customers. I wandered around for a moment, yelling back into the kitchen to see if anyone was still there dot 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 and then thought, oh shit dot 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 this is not good. I called the police to let them know I was inside so if I tripped off any alarms I wouldn't be accused of trying to rob the store. When the officer arrived he didn't initially believe me, I think dot 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 even with a huge wheeled backpack full of books, I opened it to show him. Anyway dot 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 I'd set off the store alarm when I went outside to meet with the officer. It took about 40 minutes for the manager to arrive. He recognized me and apologized and by that point the officer believed me enough to let me sit and wait in my car for the manager to arrive. I was offered a free meal for what happened. I'm guessing that never happened again, but who knows. I always said if I was single I would have done this at my university where I worked. The number of empty unused rooms in basements that only I ever opened was staggering. Also some rooms literally had a basic apartment inside of them including beds, dishes, microwaves, and exercise equipment. I would shower at the gym on campus and meals were subsidized for employees. Honestly could eat for less than 10 bucks a day. Plus commute would have been immediate. That's genius. I wonder how many little places like that exist that were just plain forgotten. Like how many squatters are out there right under the noses of the property owners? How many people intentionally slip through the cracks of conventional living and no one notices? This reminds me of an episode of a TV show called, I think, Masterminds that was on about 15 years ago. It was kind of an upside down version of the traditional whodunit crime show, where they started each episode by telling you who done it, that is who was caught and convicted for some seemingly impossible and unsolvable crime. Then the show was about how they did it. There was an episode about a guy who escaped from a prison, but he was kinda lost and had nowhere to go and nowhere to live. He was browsing through a Toys R Us store and hid inside the store at closing time to get locked in. Roaming the store during the night, he discovered a void, essentially a small hidden room under a stairwell accessible via a hole or a grate hidden by some furniture. He started hiding inside the tiny room during the day and coming out at night to roam the store. He almost so would sneak out of the hole when the store was open to go out to get food or other necessities. By stealing items from the store displays or by sneaking small items into the store during business hours passing as a customer, he created a cozy little apartment for himself and lived there for some length of time before getting caught. Yeah, I remembered some of the details wrong. He escaped from prison. Here's an article about him. My friend had a loft on the third floor of a four-story condo building. He sits on the board for the hole and had to select a roofing contractor for some repairs. While reviewing the floor plans for the building, he noticed what appeared to be a triangular-shaped void space off of the master closet on the fourth floor. One day we were curious so we drilled some holes in the wall to see what was in there. We discovered about 200 square feet of completely unutilized space. The room was unfinished with concrete flooring but there was insulation between the aluminum studs. There wasn't any ventilation or electric. We cut a larger hole, installed a door, rolled out some cheap carpet, ran some electric to the room, 
and turned it into his man cave. We called it the portal to Narnia. He used it for several years but when he went to sell the place the listing agent convinced him to seal it back up. We left a few beers and a joint in there next to a note that said you've found it. Remember that car park attendant in the UK, collecting parking fees for years, for a small piece of waste ground with a barrier and a booth. One day he didn't turn up and when the local authorities asked the council when they were going to send a replacement, they replied that they weren't aware of any car park at that location. The guy probably made his fortune and retired to some beach, can't say he didn't work for it. That was pretty much my dream as a kid. I wanted to get locked into the mall at night and then lay on every display bed because for once it wouldn't be awkward. Raid the frozen yogurt, pretzel, Starbucks stand, and have a fashion show in every shop we could get into. We should repurpose empty malls for indoor housing. You could have a senior citizen's community housed inside an old mall, complete with a shopping area community service, medical, dining, and housing. They don't have to deal with the outdoor elements, yet there could be green space, fountains, etc. When I was in grad school I lived in my office for about a year, showered at the university gym and stored my possessions in the lab, made that grad student stipend go a lot farther. One acquaintance took it to the next level and set up a tent and camping stove in the math building stairwell. Not sure how long he did it, but let's just say he could have availed himself of the gym showers a bit more frequently. When I was in college I remember hearing the legend of a mad lib back in the 80s who broke through the ceiling of his dorm room and sent up a bay blair in the attic above his room. It was a fantastic tale of sticking it to the man and hedonism because one of the things he allegedly did was install a jacuzzi up there along with a bar and a sound system. Then, one day, I got in, and there it was, up in the attic surrounded by chicken wire, a hot tub surrounded by empty bottles and cans. The legends were true. This reminds me of a dude who went to work one day in a city I lived in. Basically he saw a piece of waste ground near the city and brought a chair and a sign, charged people five pounds per day to park on the ground. They eventually found out because the dude retired, he'd been doing this for damn near 20 years. Eventually he retired and people turned up to park but had nobody to pay. The council looked onto it and realized they owned the land but had forgotten about it. Every day I think about how much of a legend this dude was. I've always hated that people can't take a president in areas that simply aren't being used or are just so far away that no one goes there. I'm not saying it'd be good if people just took up presidents wherever they felt like but I think it'd be okay if sometimes people were just allowed to stay. The headline is very misleading. I live in the city this happened in. It was not in the mall but it was in the mall parking structure. The internal beams and all exposed metal bracing was sprayed with that kind of spray concrete to protect it from the elements. This genius used that very thing to disguise the area where he built the room so from the outside it would look like it has always been there and it was just some type of maintenance area. A colleague told me he went to university with a guy who lived in Subway Tunnel. The guy according to my colleague was very smart. He studied and took shower at the university gym, made additional money by providing tuition and writing papers, assignments for other rich students, etc. I can't recall the guy's name but I was told he is an entrepreneur in the first dot-com boom bust. There's all sorts of stairwells, maintenance closets all over many local or metro cities I'm surprised there aren't county maintenance men that could easily figure out how to sell off spaces to look the other way for certain people. Years ago I used to work in central London B&B Hotel in affluent Chelsea Borough. Once during night shift whilst patrolling I found snoring noise from one of the cupboards. 
No one had the key to it except maintenance manager who came in the morning. I locked the door as I was spooked and this irritated me. It was around 5 am I could hear some rustle inside and I immediately went again to office downstairs to look for keys and just then I saw on CCTV one guy running to exit building. Later on during daytime whilst researching CCTV they found out he was ex-employee who worked on refurb of the place and had key to it. Whenever he missed last train he would sneak in and sleep in the cupboard and sneak out before before morning shift arrived. He never came after that incident as we changed the locks. I was always trying to do things like this at my high school. I had one little hidden room where I used to take my girlfriends, another was a massive cavity where we used to get high. I hope some other kids still use those spots. If anyone cares, it's been over a decade since he was discovered and banned from entering the mall. Since then, he dreams of returning to the mall again and is seeking legal action to allow him to walk in the mall again. We should repurpose empty malls for indoor housing. You could have a senior citizen's community housed inside an old mall, complete with a shopping area, community service, medical, dining, and housing. They don't have to deal with the outdoor elements, yet there could be green space, fountains, etc. When I was in grad school I lived in my office for about a year, showered at the university gym and stored my possessions in the lab, made that grad student stipend go a lot farther. One acquaintance took it to the next level and set up a tent and camping stove in the math building stairwell. Not sure how long he did it. But let's just say he could have availed himself of the gym showers a bit more frequently. When I was in college I remember hearing the legend of a mad lib back in the 80s who broke through the ceiling of his dorm room and sent up a bay blare in the attic above his room. It was a fantastic tale of sticking it to the man and hedonism because one of the things he allegedly did was install a jacuzzi up there along with a bar and a sound system. Then, one day, I got in, and there it was, up in the attic, surrounded by chicken wire, a hot tub surrounded by empty bottles and cans. The legends were true. This reminds me of a dude who went to work one day in a city I lived in. Basically he saw a piece of waste ground near the city and brought a chair and a sign, charged people five pounds per day to park on the ground. They eventually found out because the dude retired. He'd been doing this for damn near 20 years. Eventually he retired and people turned up to park but had nobody to pay. The council looked onto it and realized they owned the land but had forgotten about it. Every day I think about how much of a legend this dude was. I've always hated that people can't take a precedence in areas that simply aren't being used or are just so far away that no one goes there. I'm not saying it'd be good if people just took up precedence wherever they felt like but I think it'd be okay if sometimes people were just allowed to stay. The headline is very misleading. I live in the city this happened in. It was not in the mall but it was in the mall parking structure. The internal beams and all exposed metal bracing was sprayed with that kind of spray concrete to protect it from the elements. This genius used that very thing to disguise the area where he built the room so from the outside it would look like it has always been there and it was just some type of maintenance area. A colleague told me he went to university with a guy who lived in subway tunnel. The guy according to my colleague was very smart, he studied and took shower at the university gym, made additional money by providing tuition and writing papers, assignments for other rich students, etc. I can't recall the guy's name but I was told he is an entrepreneur in the first dot com boom bust. I work security we got a new site and we were clearing homeless out of it. Three separate shanty towns in the complex, one on the roof, one in an old gym, and one in an old bakery, they had propane stoves and had community breakfast. It was pretty crazy, the one on the roof was bizarre, they were getting up and down without using the ladder on the building or fire risers and they had no ladders on the roof, it was so strange. 
I used to work as a department manager for a local big box hardware store. Our flatbed driver was in his late 60s and avoided any work other than driving. He always seemed to disappear when there was a lack of delivery work for him. One particularly slow day we had an emergency concrete order come in. I was nice and loaded his three pallets onto the flatbread and called for him over the intercom. He didn't show up called his phone. No answer. After about the significant amount of searching I found him in a cleverly designed sleeping arrangement that he disguised with two old refrigerator boxes amongst the new in-box appliance storage racks. He slept on what I can only describe as a homemade beanbag chair made out of a canvas bulk materials bag filled with discarded polystyrene packing materials. What gave him away was his snoring. After a brief but pleasant exchange he got up and made his delivery. He explained that he was retiring in three months and didn't want to spend it stacking block or sorting stacks of lumber. I agreed to only harass him if I needed a delivery made. TLDR, older delivery driver at big box store used discarded shipping and packing materials to make himself a cleverly hidden bed to avoid manual labor while not delivering. Used to work at a very large and old Las Vegas casino. There was an old and abandoned section of the hotel that I figured if times got tight I would squat in one of those rooms. With the cost of rent in Las Vegas I would be surprised if it wasn't happening right now. In one of the dorms at Boston University, I found an empty room in the basement, along with a friend. She and I made a fully functioning dark room in it complete with two enlargers, all the chemicals, even a working sink. This was in the mid-90s, when film still ruled. Professors could never understand how the two of us always got our assignments in on time, or even early, when the photojournalism program's darkroom was always so backed up. Used it for two straight years before we graduated, never got caught. Could he have absolutely done this at the community college I went to? So many small buildings on campus that were basically just extra classrooms in case they were needed for exams but still were never used. I worked at a British TV company 20 years ago and we had a maintenance room there which was set up for the guys to have a break on shift. We had a couch and fridges and TV and a bed if you wanted a sleep. Spent many an hour there watching sport instead of fixing their building. This just reminded me of the time German 985 shoved a mall into a house with an ice cream parlor bigger than the Best Buy in PetSmart combined the germ wall of America. Everybody. Um, I dreamt I did this once, after I, in real life, found a room plan to be a air conditioning plant area that they never ended up using in a shopping center. It would have made a great apartment, even had a view through the vent slats. All you'd need to do was disguise the door. My dream was a cupboard with a false back that you couldn't tell was a door, and you could tap into water and sewage and nobody would ever know. But this madman went and did it. Anyone remember the King of the Hill episode where Dale gets hired to exterminate whatever pests are coming out at night in Lucky Mart? only to discover Chuck Main Joni was actually living inside a toilet paper fortress. Great episode. I worked for a company who seriously overcapitalized when building its office space. We literally have whole floors of our building that are unused. On the top floor there is a gymnasium with full bathroom facilities and sauna etc. Never ever have I seen a soul up there. I am sure I could live in the building but as it is located in a slightly remote industrial area the nightlife is probably a major downside. Mall management, why yes, the rent is a bit high, but there's lots of demand for space in our mall, it's really busy. Potential tenant, oh really, well. Then how come you had a squatter living in your mall for four years without you noticing? Kind of reminds me of that film The Terminal. The movie wasn't great but I still thought it was awesome how Tom Hanks character basically became the crew boss for the people doing construction at the airport. 
The summer between my sophomore and junior year in college I worked as maintenance man for my university fixing drywall, lights, painting etc. This wouldn't be a hard thing to do especially at a place like I was at. I still remember doors that I have never seen the inside of in the bottom of the basketball arena and engineering buildings. Kind of makes me jelly because he looks like he has quadrupled the space I've ever had while in school.